Absolutely, yeah. It's always competition. Nobody's locked in, but uh, Jalen and Ryan uh, both have done a good, really good job in their first two outings. So, uh, you know, over at the right tackle spot, Hayes was there for a year. We moved him in spring to left tackle. So he's at a year at right now, you know, a year almost at left. So he's done both. So he's the swing guy in there. Where do you yep. think his future is on which, what, where do you think his future is at left or right there? Uh, I, I don't make as big a deal of that as everybody else does. Everybody take, makes a huge deal of that. I don't. If the right tackle can't come protect it, that's just as bad as if the left tackle can't. But uh, I played quarterback, so I don't <laughs> see it that way. You know what I mean? <laughs> I see it like, hey. And uh, Ryan's solid, but uh, time will tell. You know, we'll work through that after the John Runyon era. Um, but, you know, John's our left tackle and should be ready to roll. How's he looking? Is he looking rusty at all, or is he back to? What no, because we've had two weeks to kind of work him through, so I okay. think he's he'll be ready to go. John will be excited to get some action. When you're weighing whether to play him, what do you look for? I mean, because he dressed, he was in pregame last week. You guys decided not to play him. What, what, do, you, what do you like? How do you oh yeah, him? yeah, we knew before that. Oh uh, yeah, okay. That was just he was dressed for emergency, emergency, and and also to keep the defense at bay. You know, the um, opponent at bay. Yeah. As well as Hayes played for you, just how important is it to have two guys with experience that know so well, Bredesen and, and running, what they're going to do out there? Well, I think all, all of this has been good for the development of our group, the confidence of those young guys. I mean, uh, Ben and John were in watching film with me this morning. They were ecstatic about uh, – getting the posse back together again, you know what I mean? And so they were watching film with me at 7.30 this morning. And uh, so, I mean, that, that's always good because that's familiar ground. They've played next to each other for 13 games, so and a lot of practices. So they're uh, very comfortable, to get comfortable together. Um, yeah, and it just gives us got more guys that have played, more guys that you feel like you're confident to put in a game. So. I think we're in a good place going into Wisconsin up front, you know. How important is that cohesion when it comes to pass protection? Well, I think it's just how they communicate up there. Uh, you know, I just think it, confidence in each other, know, knowing what each other's little, you know, because they can't have sentences and conversations up there. They have little code words and things that we talk through that they use, and everybody's different, you know, but you have those – non-verbal and verbal cues with your wife if you've been married a long time and she knows what you're thinking and you know what she's thinking and you don't have to say it and it all takes care of itself and uh you know so i think there's some comfort in that but uh yeah i just think that uh caesar's the key for our pass protection i mean he's the master of that he directs all the protections and guys help him but he he's the main orchestrator of that and he does a phenomenal job at that i've never been around one better at manipulate protection. So, I mean, he, when he gets things rolling, we're in good shape. Ben was talking the other day about him and John basically like having a telepathic connection at this point. How have they developed that? Like, what do you do specifically through the years to like get to a point like that, that he maybe they know what the other one's going to do? Well, it comes because they know they have to rely on each other for everything on that side. It's like a pilot and a co-pilot, you know, and, but they're, uh, Side by side in the meetings, they sit right next to each other in every meeting. They practice next to each other. The things that we do when we work combinations and stuff, they're in combination blocks together. They're on the same side in the protections. So their whole life is intertwined, you know, four hours a day or whatever they hang out off the field. And uh, so I think that just trust and confidence and you know, they, they had a good run together last year, and I think they're excited about getting that rolling again. What have you seen from uh, Wisconsin's front that's similar to last year and, and different? Do they, are they schematically, are they pretty similar? Yeah, they, they haven't changed their overall schematic structure. Uh, they're just playing at a very high level. They know who they are. They know who they want to be. They're physical. I mean, they lose good players, but they replace them with good players. Um, <laughs> You know, the two teams that they played are different than us. So, you know, you, you still aren't sure everything they might do, but they, they know who they are and uh, they play a, a brand of football that suits their players and the mentality of their program. And uh, they're very, very good on defense. I mean, statistically, obviously, they're tops in the country in all these categories. And 
I mean, you see that on film. They're, they're playing at a high, high level. Some, some penalties in the Army game. I think uh, Bredesen had a couple and Caesar. How do you? Yeah, uh, Ben had one and uh, Cs had uh, a couple. I mean, you know, uh, just communication with the quarterback and the cadences, you know what I mean? And just got to sit in there and be a little bit uh, more poised when, you know, noise, communication, things like that, you know, going fast. Got to, one time Caesar didn't hear what the cadence was and assumed it was on something that wasn't. The other time Ben just moved when the defense moved. And so uh, just, uh, you know, a couple little flinches in there. Uh, not happy about that. So, you know, that's been a big emphasis of trying to eliminate that. Is that a function of, of the new offense? I mean, of, of getting things worked out? Getting uh, yeah, th there's no blame other than just, uh, you know, the, the players doing it just have to be locked in more about that part of it, you know? Ben talked about the crowd noise thing too, especially at Wisconsin. How do you get them prepared for that in practice? We've been practicing noise, you know, we go in the indoor and turn the noise up and practice and make it loud in there. And we have our system of communicating silently, you know, that we have to u utilize. So that's a loud place, a big place. They have a nice home field uh, crowd and so forth. So uh, that, that'll be one of the challenges is going on the road. In the one end, you know, one end zone, it's really loud where the students are. Is Jalen healthy, and how much are Ryan and Jalen battling at right tackle now? Oh yeah, everybody, our excuse me, five starters and uh, are all healthy, and then Jalen's healthy. Yeah, everybody's full go practice yesterday. You had suggested before the season that you, with uh, Stuber and, and uh, Mayfield, you would maybe 60 40 give mm -hmm. them snaps. Would you do the same with, with Hayes? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, we could. Yeah, no, there's nothing that would keep me from playing Ryan Hayes. Yeah. So you could or you, you will? Uh, we haven't made all those decisions yet. <laughs> Sometimes you see how it's going, you know, but uh, I think you'll probably see them both play. <laughs> and is Ryan ahead of uh, maybe where you guys thought he might be? After yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, how far ahead would you say? Uh, <laughs> I liked his trajectory. It really, though, in, in the end of spring, his trajectory took off, and I thought, hmm, we got something here. And I didn't think we'd have to count on him to be a major player with uh, the fact that we had Mayfield and Stuber and Runyon, and I thought he would be the fourth guy and that he might not have to play much. And then all of a sudden, uh, things happen, and you're down two guys, and the next thing you know, you call the next man up and he gets his job done and plays at a high level. But we saw things in spring and in fall that led us, training camp that led us to believe that he was headed on a trajectory where he was going to be what we thought when he was recruited here, you know? And you knew when you got him that he was athletically, he was, there was a future there, it was just going to take Oh, yeah, yeah. He's, he's really athletic in space and running around and he has all the physical traits you want, you know? Still could be, you know, he's not gigantic in terms of weight and strength. He could be, you know, still developed there, which he will. Um, but, I mean, I think he came in at 255 and he's playing at 295. So in 13, 14 months, he went from a tight end at Traverse City West to the starting left tackle at Michigan. So he's, he's going like this pretty high. You, you mentioned know? his trajectory taking off into spring. What do, you, what do you think happened? Or what do you think, What's that? What do you think happened at the end of spring that kind of – I just think being at the position for a while, I mean, playing tight end and running routes is not like playing O-line and playing O-line at Michigan. And, you know, so just learning and high repetition of the techniques and the calls and the job description and the work ethic and the culture and all that, because that's different. I mean, being a grinder offensive lineman is different than being a skilled guy. That's a whole different culture, a whole different way of life, a whole different way of practicing. And, uh, you know, so I think – it just took time. It just took time for him to get comfortable with that and get confident. The biggest thing for most of these guys when they're athletic is just confidence. What am I supposed to do? How am I supposed to do it? And if I know what I'm supposed to do and how I'm supposed to do it, then I can start doing it harder and harder and harder because I'm not thinking about what to do and how to do it. I'm just thinking about let's get after this guy, you know, and be aggressive. And so once he got real comfortable with who he's blocking, how he's supposed to do it, then, it, you know, he just keeps playing harder and harder. And, uh, yeah, and he's developed that O-line mentality, the, you know, banging somebody every play. How do you think having John back will help the offense? 
I don't think, I mean, I love having John back and John's valuable to us, but I don't think John not playing had any bearing on the offense or what we did offensively. We didn't change our game plan. We didn't do things differently. We didn't run more to the right than the left. We didn't do any of that. We called our plays and ran our offense. And so I just think that uh, you have a veteran guy, so maybe in the heat of battle on the road, I mean, he might be a little more comfortable, you know? But uh, I think it uh, is nice to have a little bit more depth there, you know? One more on Ryan. A lot of. A lot of converted tight ends are getting drafted in the first round. Uh, That's why we line. recruit them. That's yeah, the so I guess what's what's the alert of that? And is that an increasing trend that you're looking for? Well, it's, you know, the nature of spread offense is the nature of teams throwing the ball much more. You want long, athletic, angular guys out there on the edge. So the 6'7", 250-pound tight end is a perfect model for becoming a 6'7", 300-pound athletic tackle. And so... Uh, I mean, I've always, I probably have three or four guys that played tight end that I've recruited that became offensive linemen, you know, and uh, sometimes they're playing O-line in high school, sometimes they're not, but uh, yeah, Ryan was one that uh, I had my eye on before I ever came to Michigan, so. Is it easier for them to get their footwork down being a tight end? And moving oh, I think so. I just think they're so athletic, mm -hmm. you know, tight ends and running around in space and because there's a lot of space on the edge in the shotgun and wide, wide defensive ends. There's a lot of space that you got to move around in. And, you know, Jalen's very fluid at that, but Ryan is really, you know, fluid in space. Some, Some of your conversations have got to be kind of tough in recruiting when you tell a kid, you're not going to catch touchdowns anymore. We're going to make it tougher than others. Some are easy, some are tough. Yeah, sometimes they are. I mean, they're just, I mean, I just tell them, look up what they pay left tackles and look up what they pay tight ends. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, there's a, there's a difference, you know, and, uh, you know, a valuable O lineman, they only, you know, seven O linemen in the NFL, it's all they carry on a roster. So you better be able to play right tackle and left tackle. So we cross train them all. That's why John played left tackle last year. But the, for the first nine months I was here, he played right tackle every day. And then he played left and we cross trained him in between. And then, so he, he'll be good either way when his day comes and, uh, Hayes will be, Mayfield will be, they all will be because they're all cross-trained, so they can play either side comfortably. What kind of skill set do you look for in a, in a high school tight end that tells you, oh, this guy can slide over? Well, just his frame, you know, just looking at his frame and mostly his lower body, you know. Like, what is, what is he like? Is he like a basketball player lower body or is he like a guy that's going to be 300 and some pounds, you know what I mean? So... Uh, you look at them from the waist down, you know, and then just their frame and evaluate their parents and size of their, their folks, you know, and just look at what genetics. And then there's some gamble to it. I mean, not everybody can gain 50 pounds and still move, but you've got a pretty good eye for that. It's a combination of things. Um, you know, and are they aggressive and are they willing to block in high school? Tight ends that don't want to block anybody in high school, then I'm probably not that interested in them. But if they show that interest in blocking and being physical and playing aggressively and they have that kind of frame, then that's appealing. One of the concerns I think of the fan base going into this one is Michigan's defensive line against Wisconsin's offensive line. Mm -hmm. What would you say to, to kind of reassure people? And then what have you seen from Wisconsin's offensive line over the year that they're just so able to, to run the ball so effectively? Well, they have a system offensively. They know what they want to do. They have a big offensive line. They have certain patterns. They use schemes. And they have really good tailback, obviously. We all know that. He's one of the best in the country. And so uh, that combination, and, and they are committed to running the ball. So when that's what you're committed to doing, and then you have offensive linemen that uh, play hard and are big guys and a tailback with that skill set, you know, you, you run the ball. Our defensive line, we go against them every day. I mean, they are tough. They practice hard. They're, they're using multiple guys in there. So I think our defensive line will accept that challenge. I think they'll show up. I mean, they make it hard to run the football. Um, so I think it'll be a war up front. I think, you know, that's going to be an interesting part of the game is winning the line of scrimmage, you know, on both sides of the ball. So um, Ben talked about how he and some of the other offensive linemen, some of the most experienced players on the team, and like they went to Madison two years ago and kind of were taking a leadership role in the offense. Have you seen that from them trying to prepare the, the younger players for that environment? Yeah, I think so. I mean, you know, obviously Ben is from the state of Wisconsin, so 
this game has a lot of meaning to him. I mean, he has a lot of people that he knows, and friends and people that went to Wisconsin, and he chose not to, and I'm sure he's heard a lot about it from the in-state folks, but uh, he loves Michigan, and he's happy he's here. And uh, So he wants to go out and play well and lead us to victory and, you know, try to be, be a leader and try to be a, a team captain like he is. And I think, uh, you know, I think he's doing the way Ben works. I think he's trying to, you know, let everybody know uh, what you need to do and how you need to win on the road. You know, you got to win the line of scrimmage. You got to take care of the football. And you got to be able to run the ball on the road to win Big Ten games. And so I think Ben knows that, and we know that, and he's got to send in that message. You know, strap it up. Here we go. It's Big Ten season. So, what specifically are the things that like offensive line needs to do to, you know, to do to do those things on the road? Well, I, I just think it's how you prepare. I always think that most prepared team wins, you know, and uh, so our preparation has to be exact. Our preparation has to have a, a physical nature to it. I mean, uh, without question, we had our best practice yesterday uh, since we started in August, without question. And so uh, that's, that's encouraging because, um, you know, with the bye week, we had a little extra time to work on those guys. and. Uh, so I think our guys are very confident in what they're doing, and they're doing it with a great demeanor. And uh, yeah, I, th I think you just have to. This is my assignment. This is block out the environment, block out the noise to the best of your ability. This is what I got to do, and I got to do it with a high level of physicality to match Wisconsin's intensity, you know. And high level execution is what we need, and physical play, and uh, you know, four quarters of football. And so I think we started that this week with practice yesterday. Last question. You got one? Yeah, I guess as someone who has coached in the Midwest, coach offensive mm -hmm. lines, I guess what do you make of Wisconsin's run? It seems like it's been a few decades since they were weak at offensive line. Well, I think there's a couple things. I think that that's really important to uh, the culture of their program. I think that they're in-state recruiting. They're able to recruit a lot of in-state guys that fit that culture offensive line wise, you know, and uh, so I think they're fully committed to that's the formula. Everybody has a formula for how they want to win games, you know, and the formula in Columbus is different than the formula in Madison is different than the formula in any other school. They all have their formula and they think this is their recipe for victory and success. Wisconsin's formula has been recruit a great offensive line, get a great tailback, and let's run the football and control the line of scrimmage. And they believe in that, and they've had a lot of success doing it. And that doesn't devalue how well they played on defense. They played tremendous on defense. It's just that it's who their identity is on offense. So uh, that's what they do. They go find linemen and recruit linemen and develop them and develop a running game. And their running game stays pretty consistent year after year as to how they want to block things. and. So uh, they know who they are. Thanks, Coach.